What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Hard Angle Barn YouTube channel. Uh, this past couple weekends, I did a uh, lot of tire changes. So, it made me curious. How fast is this thing compared to a pneumatic machine? Now, I don't have a pneumatic machine to really compare it to. Uh, from my experience, it takes about two minutes. DB the tire, pop it off, put a new one on. It's about two minutes. It's pretty quick. So, uh, I did a truck tire the other day for my dad. Uh, which I got footage of so we know how long that took. We're going to do a 16 inch with a medium sidewall. We're going to do an 18 inch with a thin sidewall. And that should give us, you know, three thick, medium, thin sidewall to compare uh, and see how long they take. So let's get right into it. Starting off here with the truck tire, the bead brakes really easy. It's a big, thick sidewall, so it's not a lot of problem there. Uh, put the duckbill on, pull it off. You know, nice and simple. Uh, I put an extension on the duckbill here to get up higher to get the arm out of the way of the tire. It just makes it easier to get on. Popped right on, no big deal. Tire no. And right there, I just wanted to sew off my uh, new bead seater. That thing's pretty cool. All right, popping the bead off the uh, center tire. Put the duckbill arm on. And this one pulled right off. Clean the rim here. Uh, it went right back on, no problem. This one was super, super easy. So now this one gave me a little more trouble. The bead popped really easily, actually, now that I've changed that head. Again, taking it off is not that hard, but the, the trouble started getting it back on. I cleaned the rim right here. I tried to add extension here to, because it, the arm was hitting the tire, like on the truck tire, but the problem was that um, I couldn't get the extension to fit down the rim, so I had to improvise. Um, and here the bead, just like always on these helo rims, it's trying to get stuck in the bead of the rim. So you can't get the tire down in the drop center. Uh, and then you can't get the tire on. So I had to improvise and jam a tire iron down into that bead. Well, guys, there you have it. Um, before I put the times up on the screen, I think this wheel was the fastest to change. Uh, it felt the fastest. I, I did the truck tire a couple days ago, so I don't really remember, but this one felt like it was the fastest tire to get on and off. So let's put the times up on the screen. You can tell me if I was right or wrong, because I'm still in real life. I have no idea what the times were. But uh, these Hilo wheels, they fight me every time. Uh, I usually use these as a practice wheel because they're very hard to get on and off. I don't know why, because on Cheyenne's G, which is the car these came off of, we have Koenig wheels now, and they're fine. Like, they're a little challenging, they're harder than these, but they're nowhere near this hard. These wheels, I don't know what's different about them, I don't know if the tire's too wide for the width of the rim, but they are always a challenge. So they're actually a very good learner wheel. So, just to be clear, I want to quickly go over the mods that this thing has. Um, when you buy this tool, they expect you to use this piece underneath this piece on top of the wheel to clamp it down. I don't use that anymore because it messes up your wheels. This tube that holds the bead breaker, the holes were starting to get oblong and bendy, so we made a new tube out of thicker walled steel. This bead breaker head is off of the manual bead breaker that Harbor Freight sells. This is the original one it comes with. It's not as wide, and for low-profile tires like that, this almost does nothing. So I broke the tire or the bead breaker that this came on, but it actually does very, very well on the tire machine. And then, of course, the piece everybody's always interested in. That's the duckbill head. So this is what this machine looks like now. Uh, duckbill head was like 140 bucks. Machine was 45. That machine was 50 and then my dad did this stuff for me for free. So let's just say it would have cost 50 bucks. I just tripped over a tripod. Let's just say 150, 50, so you're 250 at 250. This would have, so it's about 300 bucks. Also the bar, we chopped the end off of the stock bar and then put a four foot, four inch bar for extra leverage on. It's also thicker wall because the old one kept bending. So that is the mods on it as it sits currently. So keep in mind, if you get a stock one from Harbor Freight with no mods, uh, one, it's gonna mess up wheels, if you care about that. And two, it's gonna be 
probably quite a bit slower. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this information is useful to somebody. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video, and I will talk to you all later.